New York is a very unique city. I don't think any other city has been and is as central to filmmaking. There is a magic and a mythos here when it comes to cinema. It's actually easier to name films that weren't set in New York City than it is to name films that were. Everything from Taxi Driver to The Godfather to King Kong, Dog Day Afternoon, The Avengers even. New York is the crossroads of the world and it's a place where stories are told and lives are changed. In the two days I've been here, I've seen more confrontations, violent and otherwise, than I have in the last three years of living in Vermont. All these people so close together, all chasing something, creates the friction and drama that makes for great stories and great films. Everything is here in New York. Locations, crew, talent, money, investors, but there's also so many other people fighting for those resources. And you have to compete for every job, every opportunity, every seat on the subway. It's a crazy, exciting, impossible place to live and to travel. But for those who are up to the challenge, there's nothing quite like it. I want to catch up with my friend Jeff and talk to him about what the New York film scene looks like now in 2022. I'm Jeff Sousa. I'm the supervising colorist at Dungeon Beach and we are a post house and we've got a DI theater uh, where you can grade your films. I think film schools actually do make New York special because you have a lot of people who've come here to be serious about their film careers. So you have a lot of crew and you have a lot of people who are striving and supporting each other and forming uh, networks here. Just because of what New York is as a as a city, you know, it's a crossing roads for the entire world, basically. And I, so I think the big thing to be aware of is just how expensive it is and just sort of pacing yourself in terms of, you know, your budget doesn't make sense for you to, to be here. This is going to be a different kind of episode to Destination Film because I lived in New York City. I lived in Crown Heights in Brooklyn and I shot my first feature here, Brooklyn Tide over seven days for about $15,000 in the subways, the streets, the parks, in the heat and the cold of autumn in New York. It was a wonderful, frustrating, amazing experience that shaped me as a filmmaker. But this time I've come for three days to shoot a thriller trailer and I'm gonna take you along for the ride. People shoot here because there's so much going on. It has been the crossroads of the world for three centuries and it's an easy place to make look good. Stories seem elevated when they happen in New York. They seem gl more global, more important, more critical, more exciting, but it's a difficult place to live and to shoot, especially to shoot in a new way. You don't want your independent thriller coming off like a credit card commercial with the same postcards that everyone else has. Luckily, New York is a very big place. And if you spend some time getting to know it and getting to know how to shoot here, you can come away with an amazing result. One infuriating thing about New York is that it's so distracting. There's always something going on. There's always something to lead you away from what you came here to do. New York is easy to get around as a traveler, but difficult to get around as a filmmaker. Yes, you can take the subway pretty much anywhere for a couple of dollars, but it is really difficult to navigate with gear. Unless you wanna haul your camera bags, tripods, lights, and everything else up and down the stairs of the subway, you will need to drive it. You can put it in a cab or an Uber, but then you need to load and unload. And if you travel by car, you risk getting stuck in traffic that can literally last for hours. It took me 45 minutes to go two blocks up and one block across during peak hour. It was less than a mile. And I couldn't walk because I was carrying 70 pounds of gear. So you end up just sitting in traffic wondering how late you're gonna be, which is not very conducive to efficient filmmaking. Parking is all but non-existent. So if you wanna drive and have a production van, you're gonna have to hire someone to just sit in the van double parked all day. And you're gonna have to hire someone else to give them breaks so they can go to the bathroom or get lunch. In the three days we shot here, we took about 17 Ubers. And like everything else in New York City, it's expensive and it adds up. So New York um, was extremely difficult to film in, but since the 90s, they started making it easier. You don't need a permit to shoot on the street anymore if you're under five people. So you can say you're coming from Missouri and you want to shoot a scene in Times Square, just go there. I'm a guy who really likes grittiness, so I like shooting around Chinatown and like Lower East Side and East Village and the West Village. They have a lot of character and personality still. Yeah, the biggest secret weapon of New York is that we have B&H here. 
So literally, if you need something last second, you can order it and get it the same day. We're talking like, if you need a lens focal length, it's crazy what you can get there. At night, it's incredible. It has such a look. Unlike a lot of other places, you can just film on the street in New York. You don't need a permit. You can even put down a tripod. As long as you don't interrupt either pedestrian or vehicle traffic, you can shoot your scene just right on the street. Filmmaking is a very everyday experience in New York. People don't look twice at a film set. No one is going to stop and hold up your production unless you have some big celebrity involved. You can get around the transport issue by having really early, like 6 a.m. call times, and then trying to wrap before peak hour, say like three o'clock. I got around most of the gear issues on this shoot by shooting on just the Canon R5 with the Ronin RSC gimbal. This combination fitted in a backpack and I used a couple of small Nanlite LEDs in a suitcase uh, to get every other shot. But we had really just a three person crew, me, the actor and the behind the scenes. We shot MOS so we added the audio later and we lit mostly with the sun by picking the time of day and the direction that I thought would look good. Your phone for better or worse is central to filmmaking. Use it for directions, to pay for things, to call Ubers, to travel, to pay for the subway. And when your phone dies, everything stops. So you need to carry backup power. Having a central location is really critical. You may be tempted to stay out of the city and commute back and forth because it's a lot cheaper, but it means that if you have four hours to kill between two setups that you want to do, it's not quite enough time to travel out of the city and back in again. So you end up just sort of hanging out which can be exhausting. It's amazing to have somewhere central to go back to, to shower, to change clothes, to recharge batteries, and then head out again on the next shoot. You should know that only four and $500 a night rooms have a view of New York. Most hotel rooms actually just face a basement or another building. And if you want that iconic view of Central Park from your hotel room, you're gonna be paying you know, a couple thousand dollars a night and up. Now I wanted to get some shots that were unmistakably New York. So we went to Grand Central Station with Madison the actor and got an establishing shot of her walking towards the station. And then inside I did a circle pan around her on the main hall. And we also got some running scenes in the ton of tunnels that go down under into the subway. There was a ton of security there from transit police to NYPD to like full on soldiers with guns. No one looked at us twice. If you keep your footprint low and you're respectful of other people going about their business, you shouldn't get a problem. Probably the highest production value we got was at this steakhouse right near Grand Central. It was in the ground floor of a hotel and it was like hundreds of years old. But I noticed that they had an upstairs section that they didn't open until nighttime. So I asked the manager if we could go up to the balcony, shoot a short scene for an hour and leave before he had guests. You know, despite New York's reputation as being somewhere where everything costs a lot, they were happy to let us do it just for being tagged on their Instagram. The basement shot was actually from the building I used to live in and it's a location I actually used before in my feature film. It's a amazing network of tunnels connecting all these apartment buildings that have this super spooky boiler room which is about 120 degrees. Rather than set up lights and make it into more of a location, I elected just to have the actor with a flashlight and then bounce the flashlight in order to add some fill and the shots came out great. I saw this phone booth on Instagram um, and it gave off a real 70s, 80s New York vibe. There's only one or two left in the whole city and it's up on the Upper East Side. We were able to shoot these sunset shots looking over the Hudson and then go up to like 86 or 96th Street, wherever the phone booth was. I put my PavoTube 6C uh, in the roof to illuminate it and to reflect the actor's face. And we got a really cool effect. Nothing quite says New York City like the apartment buildings that tower over Central Park. We picked a time of day when the sun would be kind of low and I ran next to Madison with the Ronin and just got these brief clips of her sprinting against the skyline and it came out really well. My biggest tip for shooting in New York City is to come prepared and know that what you're gonna be getting here is worth the expense and the inconvenience of shooting in the city. If you only have a couple of shots that are on particular New York streets or with the New York skyline or in unique New York locations, come to the city just for those. Don't try and shoot an entire film here when you're gonna be spending the majority of your time in you know, apartment buildings, way cheaper to achieve, somewhere else. I like to think that New York is kind of the original Las Vegas. It is a machine designed to separate people from their money. Even if you have the producer, director, and DP to come to New York to 
do a week's prep. Each person is gonna spend a couple of nights in a hotel room, 100 something dollars a day on food, 100 something dollars a day on like transport and other things. So two or three people for a week is gonna cost you $8,000 just for prep before you've shot a single frame of film. There really is nothing like shooting in New York City and I really think everyone should do it at some point in their lives. It does feel like the major leagues of filmmaking. I was lucky enough to teach a class on outdoor cinematography in Central Park while I was here. We had a dozen cinematographers come to Bethesda Fountain and I had a model and my camera and I was able to run them through different ways of treating the outdoors. It just goes to show that there's always something happening in New York and there's so many people here of varying levels of expertise and experience that wanna be involved in filmmaking. It really feels like anything is possible. So two days, 17 Ubers and 112 setups later, this is what we shot. In a city of dreams. Look for my sister. She's 17. Maybe some people just don't want to be found. The only way to find a missing girl is to enter the world she was part of. Sometimes people hide who they are. They don't show their true self to anyone. Some dreams are worth dying for. Take off your clothes. Some people are worth killing for. Death Mask, rated R. That is our episode about shooting in New York City. If you've ever had a dream about going to the Big Apple and making a film there, I encourage you to try it at least once. It is a unique experience and should be on every filmmaker's bucket list. Thank you to the sponsors of this episode, Saramonic, Nanlite, Axoon, and Tenba. Without their support, it wouldn't have been possible. You can see the rest of the videos in this series below. I previously went to Montreal and I'm going to Boston next. You can see the gear I used in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and safe travels.